last week I put up a poll on my community tab asking you guys if you are experiencing slow sales at the moment, what is the number one reason for that? And I only had about four different options up and one of them was the eBay algorithm that got 19%, current economic conditions that got 45%. I asked if it was Poshmark, Macari, whatnot, all of the other competing platforms, that was 2%. Last but not least, I asked, are you the problem? And 34% of people agreed and they assumed the responsibility. So like I said, 45% of people blame the current economic conditions and 34% of people had accountability and put and put the onus on themselves. Going through the poll and about 102 people responded to this, I had to think to myself, I, I can't agree with this. As much as I want to put, you know, some onus on the current economic conditions because we are all experiencing, you know, slower sales right now. I think everybody on every platform in terms of e-commerce, retail, every industry is experiencing uh, a slowdown right now. But I also had to realize that anytime that I'm experiencing slow sales or anything negative is happening within my business, I ask myself a series of questions and that usually does flip a switch in my mind and just gives me that motivation and gets me going. And slowly but surely, my business always turns around. And that's what I've been experiencing lately as well. And my business is starting to you know, experience better sales. So I go through all of the questions that I typically ask myself and hopefully this will also flip a switch in your mind as well. Without further ado, let's get into so it. The first question that I ask myself anytime I'm experiencing slow sales or just a downtime within my business, the first question I ask myself is, are you waking up early and staying up late in order to complete your goals? And typically that is usually the first thing that comes to mind because when I originally started this business eight years ago, I was the type of person that would wake up really, really early and I would always stay up really, really late. Keep in mind, this is before I was married. This was before I had children. So being able to keep up that mentality and keep up that mindset or that work ethic for that matter was a little easier because I had less responsibilities. However, I realized that once more responsibilities do come your way and you do become a little older and you have more on your plate, it's so easy to put the blame on other people. However, I realized that Sometimes I do sleep in a little too long. Sometimes I'm trying to go to bed a little early because I am tired throughout the day. And I've realized that if you have a specific goal, you have to be willing to sacrifice certain things. Certain things might be sleep. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to take care of ourselves because that's also a question that I'll get into later in the video. But you have to sacrifice something for at least a certain period of time. And I think more recently I've realized that sometimes I am waking up a little too late. Sometimes I'm going to bed a little too early and you have to sacrifice something. So sometimes you just have to ask yourself, you know, what is it that you can do in order to complete all of your goals? Because if you're working a nine to five and you're treating your eBay or your Poshmark business as a side hustle, and of course you have to do this after work or sometimes before work, you have to put in the time. You have to put in somewhat of a sacrifice in order to get these things done. So that's always the first question I ask. And unfortunately I had to realize for myself, I wasn't waking up early enough and on certain days I'm not staying up late enough to complete all of my goals. Next question that I always ask myself is that, am I going the extra mile? And for me, the extra mile might mean responding to customers' questions a little faster. Sometimes going the extra mile might literally mean driving the extra mile to hit up that second, third, or fourth thrift store for the day. And since having kids, you know, I've been a, it's been a shortage of time for me, but I also realized that sometimes I'm not going the extra mile as much as I should. I'm not hitting up that fifth, sixth, or seventh thrift store like I used to when I first started out or I'm not going to garage sales as early as I used to go. And because of that, I'm starting to find the scraps. And you realize that you have to keep up a certain work ethic in order to see success. And for me, driving that extra mile, sometimes you might see, sometimes your first two or three stores, you might not find anything worthwhile. And that maybe that last fifth or sixth store is when you start to find the really good profitable items. So for me, I realized that you always have to go that extra mile. Sometimes it might not necessarily physically mean driving an extra mile, but it might just mean putting up some extra listings throughout the day or answering customers' questions a little faster or spending a little more time doing some research on the back end before you list an item. That way, you know, you're, you're capitalizing on all of your profit. 
when it comes to going the extra mile, it really depends on uh, your business and and how you run things. But always ask yourself, are you going the extra mile or are you cutting corners and just playing it safe? The next question that I typically ask myself is, are you networking enough and exploring different opportunities for growth? And I know for a lot of us right now, a lot of people are definitely not as social as we used to be, especially coming out of COVID. I think a lot of us are definitely way more anti-social. But I also realized that networking and you you know, just talking to people, letting people know about what you do on a day to day in terms of your business can definitely amplify your business 100 percent. So I typically ask myself, am I networking enough? Am I putting myself out there enough in order to, you know, plant some seeds? Because that initial interaction that you may have with a vendor or someone at the thrift store or somebody at a flea market, that initial conversation might just be planting a seed. But then a few weeks later or a few months later, you can actually reap the benefit from that. So I typically ask myself, am I doing enough? Not just am I hustling and am I running around to as many stores as I can, but am I reaching out to people? Am I willing to connect with people to grow my business? And lately, more often than not, the answer is no. So that's definitely something I want to make sure that I'm working on moving forward. I need to make sure that I'm networking more just so that I can grow my business, whether that means people that... Uh, work at flea markets. I know that's going to be something that I'm going to really spend some more time and energy into attending and possibly selling one day is selling at flea markets. Also finding new places to source. And in my live yesterday, I was talking about just participating in more storage auctions because one of my good friends, Derek, over at ATL Flippers, he he's right now, he's doing a lot of storage units and he's buying and flipping a lot of items and he's selling through flea markets and he's doing really well for himself and his family. And I've realized that certain opportunities are there for us, but we are so stuck in our ways that we're not willing to kind of just expand and do something different. And it really just kind of goes on again into expanding your network, because if you're not talking to people, if you're not, you know, asking questions, if you're not putting yourself out there, some of these ideas wouldn't even come to you. So I'm just putting it out there on camera so you guys can hold me accountable. I'm definitely going to start exploring some of these storage auctions and possibly some of these flea markets as well just so that I can get my hands on some more inventory because during these economic conditions, as bad as they are, I still think there's so much more potential for growth in terms of the reselling industry that if you're not doing the work, you're not going to see any success. Next question that I typically ask myself, and the funny thing is on my live once again yesterday, Derek actually asked me, uh, what are your current reselling goals? And I had to stake a, I had to take a step back because Every year I always make goals for reselling for my business and I always think to myself, what are going to be some of my goals? What are going to be some of my goals? And I had to really stop because this year I didn't make any goals and I was kind of embarrassed at first, but I realized that that's actually part of the problem because if you don't set a clear, concise goal for yourself, you're basically just going to be wandering around doing the same thing that you typically do and you have no real meter to gauge your success. So I'm definitely going to start setting uh, more realistic goals for myself, goals that I know I can complete, goals that I can accomplish. And goals that are still, you know, sizable goals because you don't want to just set a goal for yourself and say, I'm just going to put up two listings a day because if you're brand new to reselling, two listings a day is amazing. But if you have experience, two listings a day, you're, you're hardly even working. So for me, the goals of just keeping those goals at the forefront of your mind is going to be enough to motivate you to wake up early, to do the extra networking, to educate yourself a little more on different categories and stuff like that. So definitely keep that in mind if you guys are kind of struggling at the moment when it comes to your business because I think a lot of people right now just based on some of the comments that I receive on some of my previous videos uh, a lot of people right now are struggling with their reselling business but I always counteract certain stuff with what am I not doing what can I do to improve my current situation and these are just some of the questions that I typically ask myself but ask yourself some of these same questions as well because I do think that 
there's uh, there's always more that we can do with with the time that we have but it's just are you willing to actually do what needs to be done in order to see some success yeah, i recently just put out a video in terms of what sold for me recently on poshmark and that's another really good tip for you guys for those of you that are experiencing slow sales cross listing right now is super important for everybody that's in reselling and i say it all the time it's just super important to not put all of your eggs in one basket and put your items in front of more buyers and in that video i put up some items that recently sold for me that were not only listed on eBay but it was also listed on Poshmark and the ironic thing about it is that once I put some of those items on Poshmark a lot of them sold almost immediately so if you haven't checked that out I'll put that video for you guys right here and I'll see you guys in the next one peace